Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Sound Hill Origins Game Thoughts I got the good ending, and I just love how Travis doesn't even consider grabbing that infant. I, I guess he just feels like he's helped out enough. Yeah. As I say in the review, this really doesn't add anything to the mythology of the first game, and I want to add, it doesn't even stand on its own. As far as that part of it goes, the, the whole Alessa Cheryl thing. If I had not played the first game and I played this game, I would not know what was going on with the cult and everything. I'm not sure, was there even particularly any... There might have been a little literature in this game about the cult and such, but in the first game, you actually read about and heard about how there was this you know, it, it, you could put it together, and with this, yeah, the, I like the Butcher, but really, it's just Pyramid Head, I mean, this game is like, they just had these various ideas that worked really well before, they've got the entire first game, they've got Pyramid Head from the second one, and they just want to try to cash in on what they've already done that worked before. You know, the, the first time I saw the Butcher, I thought that that was supposed to be Pyramid Head. You know, and I was like, is that Pyramid Head? That's not a pyramid on his head, it's a... That's not a pyramid. Anyway, the... I like the mirrors. That is a very, very cool idea. And it really opens up new opportunities. And I feel like the game utilized them of puzzle solving, where you have to do something in one world and then travel to the other of the two worlds and something else will be possible. Or you get an item in one world and you use it in the other of them. I do feel like they cheated as out as, of a lot of cool other world transitions. There was like one cool other world transition in one of the only actual animated cutscenes in the game near the end. You know, most of them were just in engine. I'm also, a little bit of a cheat. But but yeah, you near the end you actually see the other world coming out of you know. And now, having recently watched the trailer for Silent Hill 2, now I know where they got that image of Alessa, you know, with the tearing up the, yeah. The movies just keep, just, handpicking things that they, that they are affected from these games. Although I wouldn't blame them for not picking too much from this game, I suppose. Anyway, most of the transitions are just this, Static, which it's cool, but it is a cop out. But it's 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 weaker than what we're used to seeing of other world transitions in the series. But it is genuinely disconcerting. It is disturbing to see static on your TV. You're you're used to that being a very decidedly bad thing, an, an uncomfortable thing. Now, the actual Travis story, I thought that it was pretty good. I liked this whole thing of his mother trying to kill him, and she, she's figured out about the mirror other world, and I like how that's also 
sort of a, a thing. I, I like how in these games they they sort of toy with what's reality regarding the other world. Where is someone when they are supposedly in the other world? And does time pass normally outside of the other world? And all this stuff. And I thought they did good stuff with that in this. Yeah, I could save it. In the literature about the... What's her name? Helen Grady, Travis's mother. All this stuff about how she's she's catatonic and then she comes back and she talks about oh I was in the other world through the mirror it, it that's that's very very cool very cool idea I like how the twists or maybe more developments of the the plot surrounding Travis which is by far more interesting than the a lesser plot in this game. I like how they kept hinting at things and and you sort of guess what was going to be what was going to be the outcome of something and then you see that you were right. I thought that that worked well. It's another one of those things where it's not maybe that you didn't no, I mean, you, you guess fairly early, once you start reading about a Mrs. Something in the sanitarium, my initial guess was that's Travis's mother. We, we know that he supposedly has some dark past, and yeah, obviously that's going to be, and, and the Room 500 thing at the motel, you knew that that was going to be his father in some capacity. I did think that it was going to be that he murdered his father rather than his father committed suicide. I also do think that whilst the monster of his father was awesome, the transition looked terrible. It looked like they were trying to cut two different movies together, actually. It, I, maybe what it's supposed to be is that he sort of opens up and inside there's this horrible creature. It didn't look like that to me. It looked like they couldn't do the effect. It, it looked like a real movie and they couldn't do the effect so they just shake the camera and then suddenly the monster's there. It looked really bad. Also fighting Samael again at the end there. It's just kind of boring. I just feel like they they keep going back to the well on that one, and I really hope that they don't do more. It the the cult of Sound Hill is interesting. But you gotta do new things with it, instead of just reiterating the same plot. And I suppose that more or less covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.